Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel, My Solution. I'm Raul, and in this video, you will learn about proof of cash. Proof of cash is an expanded reconciliation in that it includes proof of receipts and disbursements. Sometimes it is also called as two date reconciliation because it literally involves two dates. It is essentially a roll forward of each line item in a bank reconciliation from one accounting period to the next. Proof of cash highlights areas in which there are discrepancies and which may require further investigation and perhaps some adjusting entries. A proof of cash can indicate an array of other reconciliation issues that will require adjustments to a company's accounting records including the following. Bank fees are not recorded. NSF checks not deleted from the depositor's record. Interest income or interest expense not recorded. Checks or deposits recorded by the bank in different amounts than what they were recorded by the company. Checks cash by suppliers that the company voided. Cash disbursements and or cash receipts recorded in the wrong account. A proof of cash can also uncover instances of fraud. If there is a difference between the totals, it can indicate the presence of unauthorized borrowings and repayments within the time period covered by the simple bank statement. There are three forms of proof of cash, namely the adjusted balance method, book to bank method, bank to book method. The procedure followed in simple or one-date reconciliation are the same for a two-date reconciliation. The two-date reconciliation becomes complicated only when certain facts or data are missing or omitted. Therefore, you are required to compute for the figures missing. But if all the facts are available, then the preparation of reconciliation statements will not that be difficult as we thought. Let me illustrate to you how to prepare proof of cash using the adjusted balance method. Using the sample problem for Jack Company, but before we start preparing the proof of cash, it is very important that you should be able to identify what are the book reconciling item and bank reconciling item. If you are not familiar with the book and bank reconciling item, I suggest to watch first my video on bank reconciliation. Just simply click on the link below. So let us start by marking book and bank reconciling item to save time. Balance per book, obviously for book. Balance per bank, of course, this is for the bank. Book debits, this will go to the book. This is actually the, the receipts. Book credits, this is the disbursement for the book. Bank debits. This will go under disbursement for the bank. Bank credits equal to the receipt of the bank. Deposit in transit, it is bank reconciling item. Outstanding checks, a bank reconciling item. In my previous video on bank reconciliation, I explained what is deposit in transit and outstanding check. So please check on that. NSF check, of course, a book reconciling item. Service charge and not collected by bank, a book reconciling item as well. Observe that the book debit and credit and bank debit and credit for November are not listed anymore because they are not necessary. Proof of cash pertains only to the receipts and disbursement of December. So we will just highlight all book data into red to easily plot in the reconciliation. Let's begin preparing the proof of cash by preparing the four column worksheet starting from the adjusted book balance. We will start with November, then December, uh, sorry, this should be receipts, disbursement, and uh, the December balance. An adjusted um, balance per book okay then uh, here 25,000 
and uh, 100,000, this is the book debits, 90,000 for the book credits, and of course the December. After entering all the unadjusted balances, make sure to check if the December balance is correct by adding the November balance plus the receipts minus disbursement. It should equal the December balance. Next is to plot the book reconciling item starting from not collected by the bank. You can actually start from any book reconciling item, but for me, I normally start with notes collected. So in November, the amount of 7,500 notes collected is added to the unadjusted book balance. The notes collected by a bank in November do not affect the bank receipt in December but increase the book receipts for December because the notes collected in November are recorded only by the depositor during the month of December. Consequently, the book receipt for the month of December are overstated. Therefore, the amount collected in November are deducted from the book receipts for the month of December. Next is the notes collected during the month of December, amounting to 10,000. Notes collected during the month of December already increase the bank receipts for the month of December but have no effect on the book receipts for the month of December. Because the note collected in December are not yet recorded by the depositor during December. Consequently, the book receipts for December are understated in relation to correct receipts for December. Hence, note collected in December are added to the book receipts for December. Next, we will go to NSF check for November. This amounting to 2,500. NSF check do not affect the disbursement for the month of December, but increase the book disbursement for December, because NSF check in November are recorded only by the depositor during the month of December. Consequently, the book disbursement for December are overstated in relation to the correct disbursement for December. Next is NSF check. In December, this already increased the bank disbursement for December but have no effect on the book disbursement for December because the NSF for December are not yet recorded by the, the depositor. Consequently, the book disbursement for December are understated, are understated in relation to the correct disbursement for December. Hence, NSF for December are added to the book disbursement. For service charge, we apply the same analysis we made for the NSF check for November. So here it's negative um, $500 and disbursement also negative $500. Adjusted uh, balance per book. Since we already completed plotting and analyzing the book reconciling items, we can now compute for the book adjusted balance. Moving on, we'll compute for the bank adjusted balance. So we start with the unadjusted balances. All we have to do is to just plot the value in the respected column. Next is the deposit in transit for November. Deposit in transit for November do not affect the book receipts for December, but increase the bank receipts for December because the deposits are recorded only by bank during December. Consequently, the bank receipts for December are overstated in relation to the correct receipts for December. Hence, deposit in transit for November are deducted from the receipts for December. Next is the deposit in transit for December. Deposit in transit for December already increase book receipts but have no effect on the bank receipts for December. 
This is because the depositors are not yet recorded by the bank during December. Consequently, the bank receipts for December are understated in relation to the correct receipts for December. Hence, deposit in transit for December are added to the bank receipts for December. Next is the outstanding checks. Outstanding checks for November do not affect the book disbursement, but increase the bank disbursement for December because the outstanding checks for November are paid only by bank during December. Consequently, the bank disbursement for December are overstated in relation to the correct disbursement for December. Therefore, outstanding checks for November are deducted from the bank disbursements for December. Last but not the least, December outstanding checks. This increase the book disbursements for December, but have no effect on the bank disbursements in December because the checks are not yet paid by the bank during December. Consequently, the bank disbursement for December are understated in relation to the correct disbursement for December. Therefore, outstanding checks for December are added to the bank disbursement for December. Now we can compute for the adjusted bank balance. Observe that book and bank adjusted balance are equal. So finally we're finished and I hope you learn how to prepare the statement of proof of cash using the adjusted balance method. If you like my video, please subscribe and give us your comment. Thank you.